uh, gospel accounts. You're the wrestler. Well, we could go places with this. Body slamming for God. Just doing like this and you just fired a shot. Hey. Enjoy. It's my favorite game of the year. Leading off for the Smokies. I guess it's dog days of summer. You guys enjoy the game. We just decided to enjoy the evening. We've been wanting to come all season. <laughs> we invite all of our fans to bring their friendliest of furry friends along with them. <laughs> this is our first one, actually. We've, we've been wanting to come for a long time and just never have really made it. And I guess as long as our dogs can go, we can go. Something that we could all do together. Watch your step. It's a little sandy down there, so please be careful. Oh, yeah. She's been there for one of them. I have the good job. Press box, the dog parade is ready to go when you are. The guy at the end of the line has the bad job. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just kind of scoop it with that? Thank you. All the dog owners can sit out on their berms. It's a beautiful, on the berm with their dogs. It's a beautiful sight. It's pretty exciting. I, mean, I think they only do it once a, once a year, but I, I think They'd, it'd be better to do it more. There's so many places you can't take them to, so it was kind of cool to have something that we could bring. <laughs> Anytime you can bring the two dogs together, it usually winds up to be a successful night. Main Street, Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Tourists come here now to see the wrath of Katrina. It looks as if the hurricane came through just days ago, not five months ago. But look further down Maine, and you will see and hear the signs of a town on the main. We started at daylight, and, and daylight, and we quit basically at dark. When the dumps close at 530, then we, we have to shut down. William Moore and this crew from Texas got to Bay St. Louis in January to help in the cleanup. I thought there would be more. Uh, it would be, progress would be further along, but this is such, it's a total devastation. This is their home and they want to make it home again. The crew makes their way down Maine, picking up the debris in Carol Stromitz's front yard. Every time something like that happens, it's just like progress, you know, a little more progress, you see. It's, you know, it's just, it's just wonderful to see things coming back to normal. Getting back to normal. That's the reason for this tree. Carol says it's a long tradition to decorate it with Mardi Gras beads. When my grandchildren came at Christmas time, they were so worried about the Mardi Gras tree. <laughs> so we had some beads up in the attic, so we brought them down and the children threw them back up in the tree again because they were, they said, did the necklace tree make it? <laughs> it did. And so did Doug St. Amante. He lives a few houses up on Maine. His home didn't fare so well then. The retired teacher's job now is restoring his home. He had to gut it. Monday through Sunday, I mean, I, I, I never stop. Uh, I, uh, I get help whenever I can. Doug says a lot of the help he's gotten after Katrina has come from complete strangers. I had a guy, guy come from Minnesota and gave me a haircut. I said, what are you doing? What, what are you doing now? And he says, I'm doing whatever I can do. He said, I cut hair. A small gesture with a big impact. As people walk down Main Street, they now hear the sounds of progress and see signs of hope. The resilience of the human spirit here is just, it's just in incredible. People just say, we're not going anywhere. This is our home. We're, we're going to fix it. We're going to get better and we'll be back. Out here. Everybody's ready. For reporter Steve Zimmerman, the story of the day. It is a catastrophe up there. A local tie to the Minneapolis bridge disaster. The bridge we're standing on today is one of five bridges in Tennessee of a similar construction to the bridge in Minneapolis. But this isn't his only connection. I know so many people there because I'm from there, so I'm wondering, well, I wonder if somebody got hurt. And then for some reason, I started getting this weird feeling, so I said, I better call my sister. Turns out his sister Jane was one of dozens driving over the 35W bridge Wednesday when it crumbled under them. A concrete slab broke her fall. She's lucky, you know, it's one of those things where you just got lucky. She didn't land on another car, she didn't land on anything, you know, she didn't land in the river, so she just got lucky. 
concerns over whether the deadly and still unexplainable collapse could happen here prompted TDOT to inspect the I-40 bridge over the French Broad River in Jefferson County and the others like it. $100 million a year for bridge safety, bridge management is a significant investment on the part of Tennessee and I think that it shows that we're very serious. Crews are checking it from top to bottom to make sure it's sturdy. And while it is the only deck truss bridge considered structurally deficient, those in the know say it's safe and will serve the state well until a new one is in place. This is the normal wear and tear on a bridge, and it's just the right time for us to be looking at it for a replacement opportunity. As for Zimmerman, he'll never look at this or any bridge the same again. I don't like bridges, but I just go over them. It doesn't bother me. Now it'll probably bother me a little bit, especially if there's water below it. story of young people who refuse to give in or give up. Oh, beautiful spacious The achievements of the Clinton 12 are important on a variety of levels. For amber waves of rain. Today we come here to celebrate some hometown heroes. Mountain. This is the unveiling of our statues, the uh, 12 statues uh, of the Clinton 12. I think it kind of showed the di dynamics of how I was feeling that day. They're important to the individuals, they're important to the community, they're important to the state, they're important to our nation. This was something our town really didn't talk about, and we didn't talk about it in my house, and my brother was one of the 12 students. So it's like not only am I honoring the other 12, I'm honoring my brother too. And it's almost surreal, you know, to think that 50 years later, this is, we're, we're all here, you know, re representing this moment that happened uh, 50 years ago, you know, and they're a able to relish and, you know, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the goodness of, of all of it. overcome with the notion of uh, the events of so long ago being memorialized in that way with this uh, with this statue. I, um, I was very, very proud to be here today. We're just going to drive the loop road and look for photo opportunities. Um, we're coming up on the uh, Cades Cove Methodist Church. Over on the mountains there, we're starting to get a little bit of light breaking through the clouds, giving us just a little bit of color. Okay, we will winter up and see what we can get. These clouds are kind of neat right now. And one real advantage of photographing at this time of year is there's so few people in here. You know, you just don't have to fight the crowds and uh, it's just a different pace. It's quieter. It's okay, girls. We don't want to bother you. I always try to talk to them and just hopefully calm them because we really don't want to bother them. Right over there on the mountaintop, you can see that one beam of light coming through. But this is really nice. These two just kind of gently sparring. I actually photographed this buck in the spring and I and I kind of know his personality. He's real easy going. You know, you just mostly take the photographs and if you get good images, somewhere down the road there's a market for it. And so you you don't really worry about that too much. You just get out and get the good photos and 
worry about the marketing when you get to the office. To me, just getting out here in the winter time uh, and enjoying the peace, the quiet, and I don't know, it's just, I just think it's a great thing to do.